we really need to get our story straight. Hi, my name is Werner Puchert and I'm a creative entrepreneur. And in my previous video, I spoke about storytelling and how you can exercise your muscles around telling better stories, specifically within the business context. In this video, I want to share a quick recap, one or two tips to keep in mind when you start developing stories. And then, of course, there is a tool that will help you make telling stories and looking at the stories that you're currently telling with your customers much, much easier. At the end of the video, I have a little bit of a bonus. I have dug up some resources. I'll look you up. Cool, let's get cracking. So in my case, I use whatever methodology or process or approach you want to do to develop or design the experiences that you want to do. And then I start looking at the overarching narrative of that experience. Now, this is where this framework that I want to share with you really comes handy because it becomes a lens for me that I look at the experiences that I'm developing to see where there's potential weaknesses or areas to improve and surprise and delight your customers. The two tips. The first one, you are not the hero of the story. Twist the story so it makes sense and that you're putting the right heroes in the center of that story. So the second tip is the interplay of balance between the logic and emotion that you have mixed up in the stories that you're telling or crafting. Great, so um, I wanna use this tool, the Fabula card deck. Is, it's really a tool that, is, that helps specifically fiction writers develop their story structures and storylines. What I'm doing in this case is I'm really using their tool and applying it in an experience design or design thinking uh, space. So there is a few caveats here and there and I'll share with you um, what I do to make this tool work for me. At the core of this, there is a narrative structure. You can use the structure even without the card deck and the narrative structure that I'm referring to, and some of you might know it, is the hero's journey. You see, the hero's journey is really about going through um, a challenge. So moving from certainty to uncertainty, that interplay of emotions and logic. And that is really handy when you look at customer experience because what are we doing? We're bringing someone into our ecosystem and we hope to or uh, should be uh, taking that customer from a space of uncertainty, facing their enemies, um, conquering their fears, and then bringing them into the world where they achieve that ultimate goal that they set out to do. So moving them into the world or assisting them into this world of certainty. And that's why the hero's journey is a really, really handy framework. So before we get to the framework, let's have a quick look at what is inside this card deck. So here you have the manual. And then as I mentioned before, the hero's journey framework is actually um, summarized in here. So this is quite a handy little book to have around if you have an old brain like mine. So inside you have a group of cards, they color coded. Now, the black cards, these really refer to the experience you wanna take the reader through. So um, I usually move these aside. I don't use them at all. So there's no real gameplay necessary here. Um, and also um, the, the actual authors of the deck, the creators, actually recommend that you stick these up on a wall somewhere. And then what you would do is you would add sticky notes um, around them to answer some of the prompts on the cards. And really what they do in the blue and in the, and the orange is that they prompt you to think about certain aspects within the narrative structure. They also give you the opportunity to buy the digital version. I specifically use Mural, and I've been happily using these prompts and these cards in the, in the Mural world. But then when you look at the cards, for example, um, I'm gonna just grab one of the Hero's Journey steps here. So um, here I can immediately, at step 10 of the Hero's Journey, um, then it's got a, a little graphic on it. And then the central trial is the actual step in the hero's journey. And then it gives you a small little prompt here. Like in this case, there's a face off with the enemy. How does it go? So the card itself is really handy in, in prompting you towards what it is. Good quality stuff. Now, uh, before we get into the hero's journey, I know you're waiting for me to get there. Um, I just wanted to quickly talk through the blue asset cards. Now assets refer in this context around the things that you need, the objects, the people, and for example, here's a card that refers to the heroes. Uh, describe them, heroes, describe them, what are their needs and their weaknesses. So it really prompts you to think a little bit about the hero. Then you will grab a few sticky notes and then start adding notes around it. Then you also have uh, cards like allies, um, who's the suppliers or the people in your ecosystem that's actually helping you. And you can see where this is going. There's mood board, space, concept and theme. And you will pop this up on the wall somewhere or in your digital world and you start adding 
ideas and concepts around that that will actually really help you flesh out and really build out the experience that you're trying to create. So the nice thing about this Fabular card deck is that they really have the hero's journey nicely mapped out in 14 different concrete steps. And let me quickly take you through those 14 steps. So let's start off with the ordinary world. Now the customer starts off somewhere. What is that context? So when you start developing personas, for example, and what's the current state of the euro and what does that look like? Then there's a call to adventure, call to action. Maybe there's marketing, there's advertising, or maybe there's word of mouth, but there's a call to action. The euro is called to do something. Then the next step is the, and uh, on the card deck here is referred to as the anxiety of the call. Now it's also referred to as the refusal to the call to adventure. The euro, the customer refused it, call to adventure. No thanks, I don't want to, uh, I'm not interested. Then what happens is we introduce the mentor. The thing is, you are the mentor. So the company, the business, the aid is really the mentor. So see yourself in the euro's journey as the mentor. So we have card five here is really through the threshold. Um, we also refer to that as crossing the threshold, moving from the ordinary world into the adventure, into the experience, into the story. So um, this is really important, especially when you think about something like event design. So a person comes in off the street, steps into your event space, and this could be virtual or physical, steps into that space. Do you just rush them off into a room with a goodie bag with all kinds of rubbish in it? Or do you help that attendee transition into the experience that you're creating? It's a very important step to keep in mind. Next one is the new world, perhaps introducing um, allies, friends, you know, what does that new world look like? Now before the, the hero goes off to face the big ordeal at the end or the enemy, there's some trials, there's a journey happening, there's drama is increasing, right? And then at some stage the hero deems himself or herself ready. And this is the fulfillment step, step the nightfall. So just before the big ordeal, what does the hero think, feel and, and do? Then of course there's the climax and how it plays out, the central trial, the big ordeal. And then after the central trial, you have the outcome. So then we have relapse. So relapse is, it's not over yet, but what consequences does he or she face? Then there's some kind of ch resurrection, the change really takes effect. And then finally, the conclusion. Now a lot of the materials refers to this as the return with the elixir. When the hero goes back into the ordinary world, what is, what is he or she taking back with her? And then finally, there's a few cards left in, the, in this category. And this is really uh, focusing around the hero, who the hero is, the second hero, and potentially the role of the narrator. So let me grab my laptop and I'll show you what this looks like in the digital space. The vertical space really refers to going back to the assets and grabbing some of the elements there. So for example, your heroes, who are the heroes? So they've given you two hero cards. Of course, you can add more and you map them out here. On the top, horizontally, you will then start mapping out the different steps of the hero's journey. Okay, great, a quick summary. Remember, you're not the hero of the stories that you're crafting for your business. Second thing, remember the balance between emotion and logic. Then. If you wanna know more about all this, I really encourage you to go check out any material you'll find out there on the Euro's journey. I'll post a few links if I can. Just super interesting and very interesting to apply to experience design and to customer journeys and even into sales. Then finally, I shared with you a very nice tool. As I mentioned, I'm using this tool to work for me um, as a little bit of a framework, but really handy. The Fabular Basic Card Deck for Nonfiction Writers Go check it out, these guys are awesome. And then I promised you a few resources. Joseph Campbell's The Hero with a Thousand Faces, Designing Experiences by Robert Rossman and Matthew Durden, uh, Building a Better Story Brand um, by Donald Miller. And then finally, a book that I personally really in, uh, appreciate um, from my world. Um, it's Brenda Laurel's Computers as Theater. So there you have it. I need to go check if the barbers are open so I can get this sorted out. And um, I hope that you found this useful. And uh, remember, wash your hands and please drop me a like or a comment. And uh, as always, catch you in the comments.